Michael. Um, I first have to say um, that, in my mind, the, the two best things that have happened to after school and out of school time in our state and probably around the country were the election of our longtime champion, Tom Torlison, to be superintendent, and then the appointment of Michael Funk to be the division director. <laughs> And I, I want to give a special thanks to Debbie and Alexis who spoke right before me because um, I am going to refer to notes just like they did. I do not have the ability of Bob Cabeza to intelligently deliver 16 minutes worth of content while pacing back and forth and engaging every member of the audience. So I'm going to stay safely next to my notes so I don't think it's um, I wanted to start also by just acknowledging how um, valuable the learning and after school frame and principles have been in the work of my organization as an intermediary that's doing both technical assistance work and public policy and advocacy work and particularly in the advocacy work it's been um, really important to have this language to be uh, to be consistently promoting with um, with public officials and decision makers about how out-of-school time programs are places of learning. And I think that is incredibly important right now in the fiscal context that we're in. And the one thing I would change about the learning and after-school language is that we should also be referencing summer. And summer has been this sort of um, forgotten piece of the puzzle for a very long time, and that's what I'm here to focus on today. Um, my organization has spent a lot of time thinking about summer over the last few years, and I am continually fascinated about how summer has been this really largely ignored time and space for learning for kids in the policy funding arena, and even in after school conversations that we have been in for a very long time in our state and in our country. And it seems to me that this is one of the most stark examples of what happens when we're not, when we're failing to connect what we know in research and science to practice, and when we're not connecting knowledge and, quite frankly, common sense to our public policy and funding decisions. It's really <coughs> quite remarkable. So I want to take just a moment to look at some of the research on summer learning that I know a lot of you have probably already seen by now, but it just really needs to be um, reiterated. Um, this thing we have called summer learning loss or summer slide, as it is sometimes called, the phenomenon when, when kids who are not engaged in some kind of um, learning experience over the summer, they forget some of what they learned during the year and they start the next school year behind. And according to my colleagues at the National Summer Learning Association, this phenomenon has been documented for about 100 years. So 100 years is a very long time to have known about something. Now, we have more recent studies that looked at the relationship between summer learning loss and this thing we call the achievement gap between lower and middle income kids. And this research, I, I think, is just truly stunning and has been really eye-opening for us and all the people that we talked to about this issue that that a full two-thirds of the achievement gap by the ninth grade level can be attributed to what happens to kids in the summer that the experiences of low and middle income kids over the summer are so different that it's pushing them further and further apart each year and it's having these dramatic effects on the trajectories of their life in school and beyond. And in addition to the research, just to look at the practical for a moment, where you know anybody who works with kids during the school year knows that kids don't miraculously stop needing things when the school you know doors close in June and start needing them again and start having needs to learn and all of these things in September. It's it's crazy. So we know that summer can be a pretty dangerous or bleak or quite frankly boring time for a lot of kids. We know that 
summer is also this beautiful, wide open time and space of opportunity to do projects and outings and all sorts of creative ways for kids to learn in a totally different environment and setting than they do during the school year. And if you think about it, you know, those are the very kinds of experiences that middle and upper income kids are having as a matter of course. And it's those experiences that they're having that are protecting them from this thing called summer learning loss. So, given what we know from the research and given what we know from practical experience, why hasn't this been a major topic of discussion in public policy and education policy? Why wasn't summer called out when California passed Proposition 49, the After School Education and Safety Act, 